Oh, hi. Uh, today uh, we will talk about uh, magnetic design uh, for power electronics. So in the earlier weeks uh, we discussed about uh, you know how to design a flyback converter or forward converter and we can choose like a number of turns and maybe we need some uh, specific specific uh, magnetizing inductance and that kind of things. So let's have a look at uh, to details like how to uh, design and how to properly choose a, a magnetic core and number of turns and etc so actually we we talk about those topics in a couple of uh, different courses so i strongly advise you to look at those links you know whenever you have time onto the starting from the third year electromechanical energy conversion course and also we discuss those things in the in the graduate level uh, machine design course so actually it is quite a, a large topic on different aspects uh, we will not cover all those things and i strongly advise you to you know click on uh, those links and read uh, as, as much as application notes and reference materials as you can see so let's start with the uh, magnetic materials first so actually if you remember uh, if you remember from third year uh, normal like 50 hertz grid connected uh, transformers what we use is mostly electrical steel laminations so they are like uh, electrical steel like made of thin laminations uh, to reduce the uh, core losses and eddy current losses that kind of things but the thing is they are mostly used for uh, low frequency applications like uh, 50 to 500 hertz maybe Know, that kind of applications but once you design a, a forward converter or flyback converter actually we are dealing with uh, much higher frequencies so uh, the core losses of uh, those ones will dominate uh, your you know all the losses in your converter so they are not really used for uh, power electronic applications okay so i'm uh, again you can have a look at those things so these are the you know electrical steel uh, types so the most common one is the silicon steel you know there's also cultural steel nickel alloys these are for electrical machines so they have usually high uh, saturation points okay so we have the cobalt alloys uh, these are mainly for electrical machine applications so what we you know use is uh, soft ferrite cores actually this is like uh, one of the most uh, common materials so it is kind of a powder material and it is centered into any shape that you want so you can have like toroid shapes like that cylindrical shapes u cores or e cores you know that kind of uh, materials so it is like made of iron oxide with some manganese and zinc addition so they have usually the ferrite cores are low saturation points so what maybe you used to remember is from the again third year courses is we can go up to like 1.5 1.8 tesla then the electrical steel lamination starts saturating but we need to be more careful in the power electronics application so they usually and even there are some materials working around 0.3 tesla but again, uh, it all depends on the material type. So you need to be careful. And we will talk about how to calculate those uh, saturation points. And more importantly, like uh, they are quite brittle. Again, this year you will not be doing any hardware projects. But you know, there are like many projects in the previous years. They just bought the magnetic core and dropped into the floor and it just shattered. So you need to be careful uh, while handling these cores they usually have high permeabilities so uh, mu r is relative permeability like how permeable it is compared to air uh, it was like the for ferrite cores is around a couple of uh, thousands right so these ferrite cores can be used as chokes uh, maybe we'll hear that one a lot choke filters uh, i'm sure you have seen you know that kind of uh, combinations uh, I'm looking at any applications on my desk, but I couldn't find now. So they are uh, nothing but a couple of like uh, cores. So you are putting it around the cable. So actually, it is uh, creating its uh, inductance. So it filters out some high frequency noises because the inductance is J omega L. 
so it becomes like a low pass filter so you can eliminate uh, some cores okay so another important part is uh, you will hear again that one quite a lot like is it easier to store energy with high or low permeable material for the same uh, flux density so to, to discuss that uh, let's uh, do a quick review of let's say this is your b h curve and this can be like your meters and this is your uh, flux density right so you can have you know, that kind of uh, material or alternatively what uh, you can draw is you can draw the flux okay this was weber and again this was remember weber per meter square and uh, this one you can write uh, mmf like write mmf ampere turns or similarly you know what you can write is you can write either uh, current okay current ampere and you can say flux linkage weber turns actually you know with the si units uh, they got rid of the ampere turns as a unit but i still prefer to use it uh, just to uh, use some distinction between these ones right so you can have the same course so let's say you have some magnetic material and you can have an inductor and it is working in that point okay so i hope again you remember all those relations from third year if you don't uh, please uh, go and review uh, those things so again the relation between b and h here is the uh, permeability so as the for example as the permeability goes up so if this is e h so let's say this is air so for permeability relative permeability it is one um, for iron let's say again that should be more exaggerated but relative permeability is let's say 1000 normally that the slope of that curve will be uh, thousands times uh, more steep than the other one right so for the same i mean why we use high permeable materials in magnetics is like using the same using the same ampere per meters okay so you can get that amount of flux density with air but with iron core you can get uh, that uh, amount of high permeable material so that was the relation between b and h right and again if you let me write here and you can remember reluctance is like l over nu a and uh, you should also remember is the relation between mmf and flux is flux like is like uh, current so mmf was like voltage source you know the analogy between electrical circuits so what you can write is voltage is equal to uh, current times resistance or what you can write is mmf mmf or again this is ni is equal flux times reluctance right so the higher the reluctance the smaller the uh, flux in the in the core or in, in the materials and again i hope you remember that b is actually flux divided by area of your core and again uh, another really important term is like inductance is actually flux linkage per current and again uh, flux linkage can be like number of turns times flux going over that one okay so actually if you look at that one and that one right mmf and current or here number of turns is came to here so the slope here gives you the uh, permeability so the slope here uh, is giving you like lambda over i so that slopes gives you the inductance right it is operating here 
and again uh, i think you should uh, remember like the stored energy in a <coughs> inductor is one over two uh, li square okay so let me write here one over two i square and again uh, for the same inductance you know we talk about the energy conversion and that kind of things in the in the third year so i think you should uh, remember that the energy stored in a magnetic core so actually that one is the energy density so what's sorry joules per meter cube right so this is divided by meter square this is divided by meter and here like this is ampere but ampere turns is again scalar value so this is multiplied by meter and this is uh, flux uh, times you know weber over divided by meter square becomes weber so it's multiplied by weber square so the area on the bh curve on that side was energy density where here like we have joules okay and again we have energy here so again if the inductance changes with position we have forces you know that kind of things so these are not important uh, for this course but you need to understand the relations between all these uh, graphics right so let's go back to our question so it says is it easier to store energy with high or low permeable materials right but it says for the same flux density why it is important for the same flux density let's say you have a core material uh, with a larger flux density and then it may you know sat start saturating so we are limited with the material properties and we would like to see how we can uh, store more energy with that region so it says for the same flux density so we are either moving here or moving there so again if you just look at it doesn't have to be iron but let's say a larger uh, relative permeability material so if you just store energy in the air so it will be that region right however if you store energy with a high permeable material for the same flux density the energy will be just that much right so that is you know reduced so you can store more energy with less permeable material okay this is really important so again the other one uh, for the uh, energy density joules per meter cube so that is why we have a volume term again you can drive uh, you can get a review of those equations in the third year uh, course so b square over two zero so actually you can store more energy in the air gap so that is why in some topologies we will discuss that one so air gaps are added deliberately okay so to increase energy storing capacity so in a normal e-core so if for a perfect like transformer if it's going to be work as a transformer so you don't have to store energy inside the core because you are transmitting uh, that energy immediately but remember for for example for the flyback converter what we were doing is we were storing energy in the magnetizing inductance then we are using that energy to transfer to the secondary side so for that kind of uh, topology so the core itself is not just behaving as a transformer but it is behaving like a energy storage element so anyway so here what you see is a e core without gap so they just uh, perfectly fit uh, together so you can just put two e's together and then you can uh, start like winding your coils from here to there right so with the gap okay the same thing but with the gap so you have that uh, kind of uh, core so it is not like they are uh, made by mistake it's not a manufacturing uh, error or anything like that but you have that gap so that 
you have less permeability here and again remember the air is less permeable than that one maybe a thousand times less so uh, you can store more energy during even if the volume is small maybe you can store more energy in that region compared to all other parts again you know this year we will not be doing any hardware projects but you can you know make that e core a gapped core by putting some uh, let's say papers or that kind of uh, distance material so instead of just fixing them perfectly you can put some material so you can have uh, gaps on in on all three uh, legs okay but uh, we have uh, some specific equipment uh, for that one again there are some uh, gapped toroids uh, like that so you know you can have you can store more energy but actually we have uh, a better solution with that one so there are some uh, distributed gap course course and actually they are you know specifically made for uh, that kind of applications and the idea is really simple so you instead of all fixing those you know iron powders uh, closely touching each other what you do is you just insert some uh, insulation layer so these are all tiny air gaps you know distributed along the core so it is mechanically more robust and also they have advantages in terms of the eddy currents as i will show and all so distributed gap course since you know there are uh, some air gaps in between uh, the equivalent uh, permeability is, is quite low maybe you can have even lower than 20 you know it's around this range so they have all different types and again we don't have enough time to discuss all these materials so that is why i advise you to have a look at different application notes you know search for the data sheets and that kind of thing so the most uh, common uh, brands are like cool mu cool mu powder mpp you know this all manufacturers uh, brands so iron powder is also quite common so cool mu here you see a couple of examples again you know they have like tiny gaps and uh, they have different uh, types different uh, types of cool mu so they have uh, most importantly again it is the same uh, with the ferrite and they have lower core loss so here what you see is some core loss milliwatts per centimeter cubes uh, per flux density at like 10 kilohertz so here it is laminated steel again this is kind of a logarithmic scale so if you use cool me then the core losses are kind of low and actually that difference gets larger if you increase it to operate at uh, 50 kilohertz right and again you know different uh, materials have different advantages in terms of the cost like the core losses like DC bias and like MPPT, cool mu, high flux, X flux. You know, there are like different types depending on your application or performance criteria. You need to choose either, you know, these materials or even maybe other types. Okay. So, one advantage is for the distributed gap uh, versus like the gap ferrite is the fringing flux. So, in a ferrite, uh, like gap ferrite maybe it's exaggerated a little bit the gap distance is you have some uh, coils here like in between right so then this will be filled that region will be filled with copper and it will create some magnetic flux the magnetic flux will come like that but it is not always uh, traveling vertically they will try to also go the longer way these are called the fringing flux but if you have uh, copper in this region those fringing flux you know will you have h you have b you have a conducting material you have some eddy current problem on that region where you have in a distributed gap you know all those gaps are really tiny and distributed across the core and the flux will travel nicely inside uh, that core and even if you have coppers in this region it will not uh, create a significant eddy current losses right 
So fringing flux increases the copper losses in in the gapped cores, and again depends on your application. And ferrite usually has some sharp saturation. And let me, I think, if that one gets opened. So by a sharp saturation, I mean like that. So with the ferrite gap, so you have the uh, per unit of initial permeability. So it goes like that, and once you have some kind of high current so it starts saturating the core and the saturation is quite sharp so that sharp, sharp saturation means your inductance value changes quite quickly so it will affect the performance of your converter where in cool mu yes it will still change but it is not uh, over a specific region so you will start feeling it less and less so it can you know smooth out the characteristics of your uh, converter so powder cores again uh, for the same energy to store uh, they are usually uh, smaller okay and again another important thing uh, with the ferrite material uh, they the permeability of those materials changes with temperature so it is easy to design you know a transformer an inductor at room temperature but you need to think what happens once the uh, once the core the transformer starts working because it will create some losses so the temperature will go up and on top of that your ambient temperature uh, can change so you can have different requirements for commercial applications military applications the ambient temperatures can go up or down so you need to be you know careful about uh, those variations so again you know powder cores have higher inductance tolerance again i hope you know those items will be more clear once you, once you start uh, designing a specific uh, equipment and we will do a design uh, exercise a numeric exercise later on but let's have a look at uh, some example now so here i'm just opening some you know data sheets uh, from uh, cool mu again you can see different uh, types different geometries and this is like the toroids like e core u core and it goes like that that starts simple so there is uh, the toroid i don't know let's open one of that one right so couldn't find another one okay here you go let's open the data sheets okay so here you know that is a core again you know we will talk about how to design uh, a core but let's try to understand a commercial data sheet first so at first like it's the physical uh, dimensions the outer dimension uh, outer diameter inner diameter and the thickness a b c o d is o, outer diameter inner diameter and height so again it says uncoated with coated uh, probably it has some thin uh, coating over that one so again when designing your uh, pcb or uh, enclosure you need to make sure it, it fits in physically okay the most important parameter is written like really on top of here so let me zoom in a little bit so it is the permeability so for that material the permeability is given as 60 right so this is the relative permeability so you don't have to think about like tiny gaps and that kind of things it's all uh, calculated and it is given so technically what you can do okay so let me uh, take it uh, so technically uh, once you have once you have the core geometry thickness and that kind of things you can calculate the uh, reluctance is equal length over mu a and length is remember that's like mean length not the outer diameter not the inner diameter but the one in the middle and the area is the cross section area ac like mu is given so actually you can calculate the reluctance 
and from your reluctance what you can uh, also remember is the inductance is equal to square of number of turns divided by reluctance right so you have the uh, parameters to calculate the inductance uh, if let's say i want like different color say one two three four five uh, windings right so you can calculate what will be the inductance but actually you don't have to worry about that one because we have given an al this is called the inductance factor so what does it mean it is its unit is nano henry per turn square it is like 17 plus and minus 15 person so what does it mean so al inductance factor is given like 17 i think it was nano henry per turns square so it is actually you know that value one over r of that value so that means if i use one turn so that is 17 nano henry if i use 10 turns okay i need to multiply that value this is turn square by 10 to the uh, 2 so this is like what what does it makes uh, 1700 uh, nano henry or 1.7 micro henry or if this is like 100 turns then it is like 17 times thousand square whatever it is so you can just decide on the number of turns okay depending on what is the what is the inductance that you need to get which you can uh, get from your simulation results and you can find the equivalent uh, number of turns to achieve uh, that inductance value again you don't have, you don't have to you know worry about calculating all the reluctance or geometries that number is quite useful anyway so let's uh, move on uh, what we have here so let me zoom out a little bit uh, what we have here is the electrical characteristics so it is watts loss at 100 kilohertz at 0 0.1 tesla so that is given like 900 milliwatts per centimeter cube if you are working at that characteristics again i will show you uh, you can have i mean this is this is just the data sheet of the core right it doesn't really uh, include uh, detailed information about the material uh, in order to get detailed information you need to click on the material type and from that data sheet i don't know let's uh, try to find that one so again i think uh, probably cool new shapes property curves okay so for example for every material that is done like you have more detailed uh, graphics for what is the flux density versus that one and the losses not for the value given in the that specific data sheet but at different frequencies and so on so you need to have a look at those you know material data sheet this is just a, a core data sheet anyway but that one also can be useful and again it just gives you what is the like minimum uh, dc bias okay so that you need to talk we will talk about that one so or that is uh you know instead of ampere per meter and they are given in or stat and other unit so let's skip that one for now and this is the voltage breakdown mechanical properties and that one also will be quite useful it is the window area so again you can calculate with the dimensions but it is the cross section area here because again if you remember it from your uh, third year labs uh, what happens if i want to uh, put like 10,000 turns here maybe i need like really high inductance so i calculate it and i find the number of turns as like 10,000 but maybe there is not enough surface area to fill in 10,000 uh, number of turns so you can you know calculate uh, that one 
again cross section area is the cross section area over here volume that is given at length uh, that can be uh, quite useful and but there are more uh, uh, detailed information pad length is the equivalent length of copper for one turn so you can actually calculate if you are going to get 100 turns so what should be the length of the cable that is going to be used in that in that uh, inductor design so it is 9.42 millimeter but actually you know there are uh, more detailed information so let's say if you want to put 10 turns so each of those turns will be 9.42 millimeters that will be no problem but if you are putting like 100 turns so you put like 10 turns at first maybe 20 turns like all across the circumference of the core but the second 20 will be on top of the first layer and then you will have a larger radius larger uh, circumference then you have another 20 on top of those things third layer fourth layer fifth layer so your uh, coils will get bulkier and bulkier actually that one uh, shows that value so you calculate the cross-section area of the copper you calculate the winding factor fill factor fill factor is the total number of uh, uh, copper area divided by all that window area so you are uh, let's say you are filling 30 percent of the gap with the copper so if you are using a winding factor or fill factor of uh, 30 percent then your winding length per turn increase from 9.42 millimeters to 9.84 millimeters right so you need to be and actually it goes on for 60 70 up to like that right so again uh, these are you know all other dimensions surface area unwound core and with 30 a percent winding factor and that will be and that can be used for thermal calculations uh, while calculating the convection coefficient and again curry temperature is the temperature that it loses all its magnetic properties so obviously you don't go up to that uh, value but again coating temperature is rated at like 130 celsius probably you don't want to go beyond that value because you will start uh, damaging the insulation of uh, copper windings so again uh, this is the you know the dc bias characteristics here like 80 percent 50 percent here so this is the uh, ampere turns right so the inductance value that you have inductance value that you work here is like 17 here but somehow if you are applying a dc current with those ampere turns so this core is quite small so ampere turn values are, are small so for example if you are working at 20 ampere turns let's say you have uh, uh, 20 turns and each you know the current uh, in the coil is one amps so you are working at 20 ampere turns so now the core will start saturating and the inductance value will not be like 17 and nano hundred per turn square but it will be less so eight percent is the value that it reaches to you know eight percent of that 17 so it's around 30 ampere turns or if you excite even it more up to like seven ampere turns so the core will start saturating and you will have only half of that inductance so your inductance value will start reducing so you need to be careful you know you shouldn't just design using uh, that number but you need to double check uh, with the current ratings in your transformer you are not saturating or you are not changing the characteristics anyway so you know we will uh, talk more detailed about those things in the rest station again uh, probably you will not be using in your hardware projects but for uh, larger applications or more challenging applications uh, they can use amorph or nanocrystalline laminations so they are again specific type of uh, materials and they have quite a high permeability and especially for high frequency transformers uh, 
uh, like for PV applications and that kind of, you know, DC DC converters or in other uh, transformer applications, uh, you can use uh, that kind of material. So here, uh, what you see is a comparison of like different materials. So you have, or this is the saturation limit. So for like low low permeable and also a low frequency applications you have the silicon steel and iron and then you have the ferrite ferrite has like a low saturation point but a high permeability and you have all the you know amorph alloys and permalloys that kind of things so nanocrystalline materials is somewhere here so it's like a advertisement and again uh, here I, I like uh, that graphic so it just shows the comparison of uh, again this is not a for a power electronics application it just shows you a 4 kva reactor design so what happens if you design the same properties like using a ferrite uh, since the uh, the saturation value of ferrite is uh, quite low that ends up having a large core okay and then having a large core means then the you know turns ratio of your uh, copper wire will be longer so that will end up in using a, a large loss in the copper wire and then you have core losses here okay so for example if you use amorph alloys okay so amorph alloys so in the amorph alloys the saturation value is increased so both the copper and the core losses are reduced or you can use high silicon steel like normal material uh, again the saturation point is is quite high so the size of the core is quite small but the core losses are quite high okay again you have like different the same properties and you have different volumes different power losses again depending on your application uh, unity came up uh, with some optimization most uh, Suitable product. Anyway, here I again strongly advise you to have a look at uh, those uh, documents. Okay, so again uh, you can have a look at uh, that links uh, to review your uh, topics. And again, I uploaded uh, a couple of I uploaded a couple of uh, application notes. There are uh, some chapters from Ericsson and also Mohan has some uh, section with the design of uh, magnetic components so let's have a look at how will it be with the inductor design so again instead of just uh, starting with a transformer design it's easier to understand the inductor design at first so you need to understand the magnetic circuit first right so you need to calculate the B you need to understand your H so what is the stored magnetic energy that kind of things then you have the electrical design so in the electrical design you need to choose the number of turns and you need to decide on what should be the thickness of the you know copper the wire type and what was going to be the current density etc so again you know once you have the magnetic core and once you have the electrical design uh, you can calculate the inductance and you know leakage and resistance uh, calculations and then you need to make sure that your system works uh, well you know uh, with the thermal so you need to calculate the losses in your circuit and again there are some uh, rule of thumbs uh, while designing the uh, inductor but you need to double check your design and if you need to make any actually it is not just uh, from top to below once you have any problems in any of the stages you need to go back to step one that make some iteration so it is quite iterative uh, process okay so a typical core again for power electronic application is something like that so you have uh, some core and they are uh, used some there's some plastic uh, item so it is the coil is wrapped around that one and then you assemble all those things and in the literature you will hear you know that kind of uh, definition so u-core is the name so it's like u-shaped and you can get a u-core and you can get an i-core and you can like close the gap so once you put the windings you can close the gap 
and they have a closed uh, flux a closed path for the flux then you have the e course again e course can be combined like again like two e course can be combined like that or you can combine an e core and i core to have that kind of shape and there's the turrets probably you know and pot cores uh, i think i have some one somewhere here but anyway so pot cores are two cylindricals i think i have some uh, photos as well again you know we talk about all those core materials ferrite laminated cool met matte glass powdered iron that kind of things so there's uh, this presentation is more related to how to manufacture those things but you know this year you will just uh, making some uh, simulation design uh, some theoretical design but it is important to understand how it works so you have you know usually that kind of plastic uh, bobbins or they are in turkish called carcass so with that plastics you just uh, wind your uh, copper around it and then you place it inside your core so this is your uh, carcass and then you just wind your uh, coil around it and you just place here and then you, you close the e core and these are you know pod cores so pod cores have like one uh, like it's like c core but the core actually closes all around its surface usually they are uh, slightly uh, more expensive but because the core closes the outer circumference the leakage flux and also the emi problems are uh, less on this type of core so again if you if you are worried about some emi problems or the leakage flux affecting some other circuits uh, maybe it may be more useful to use a uh, pot core okay again here are some links that you can refer so let's have a look at the uh, winding design so first you need to decide on the like depending on your core so what is the available area that i can fill with the copper windings okay so winding area and copper area then fill factor is important so let's say you are using uh, a one millimeter square uh, copper wires and let's say you are using like 40 turns right and the uh, area of your core is 100 millimeter square then you have 40 times 1 millimeter square divided by 100 millimeter square so your fill factor is 0 0.4 again it may be like really uh, difficult i mean if you go over i mean if you are just using conventional round wires it will be around 0 0.5 0 0.8 because of insulations and also those circular coils will not fit perfectly and for litz wire with all the other insulations around it it is even loss bit lower i mean if you are using some rectangular cores rectangular wires then you can go up to 0 0.7 0 0.8 but then with that amount of copper in a small area then you need to think about the thermal uh, problems okay so i think a fill factor around 0 0.5 0 0.6 uh, can be a good starting point so then uh, you need to have a look at the core losses once you have chosen uh, the core material then depending on the operating uh, point let's say you are uh, running i don't know a push pull converter or that kind of uh, and let's say you are moving up to 0 0.1 and minus 0 0.1 tesla so the delta b is 0 0.2 tesla so you can find 0 0.2 here and depending on your let's say you are working around 50 kilohertz then at 50 kilohertz uh, the again it depends on your material but let's say your watts per centimeter cube is 0 0.2 watts per centimeter cube then let's say your uh, core is uh, 10 centimeter cube so you can calculate the overall core loss and you can calculate in your uh, efficiency values okay and most of the time most of the time these things are you know giving in the data sheets but sometimes maybe you need to find uh, the value just in between or maybe not every frequencies are given so for that one uh, there's the statements equation so usually you know that one is 
you know given uh, for specific materials so you can find those uh, constants in the data sheet or some or some other references so this one is uh, some this is the iron losses power and this is some constant and there's some frequency and again there's some power to the frequency again it is usually higher than one but less than two it's between one and two so again this is your operating flux density and again there's another constant so this alpha and beta that's the ones that you need to find from the material properties and ac is the cross-section area lc is the length of the core so that is basically the volume of the core so once you have that constant those two you know constant you know your switching frequency you know your operating flux density you can calculate all uh, core losses right uh, skin effect uh, that can be uh, quite important for high frequency applications and remember for uh, again let's say copper at 100 uh, celsius so the skin depth is 7.5 divided by square root f again uh, i think you can get more detailed information about the skin depth calculations so this is the penetration depth for 25 celsius and 100 celsius so let's say if you are working at uh, 10 kilohertz so it is again uh, this is 0 0.1 uh, centimeter so this is uh, millimeter basically so your skin depth is around millimeter so if you somehow use a couple of millimeter thick uh, copper wire so the current will not float homogeneously and it will just increase your uh, ac resistances okay and actually it becomes more and more and more dominant as you go to 100 kilohertz okay at 100 kilohertz uh, the at 25 celsius it is around i don't know what is so this is one tenth of a millimeter i think it is 0 0.2 it's true correct and uh, 0 0.2 millimeter okay so you need to use uh, really thin wires there's another thing uh, called the proximity effect okay so it is the distribution of the coils uh, between adjacent coils okay so if you somehow put two conductors next to each other like that one okay okay and if they are carrying current in the same uh, direction okay even if i mean i think this for uh, demonstration the coil 2 is now uh, open circuited okay if it is open circuited and if you create a high frequency current here so it will try to induce some eddy currents in that region so as a result as a result what will happen is you will have negative j here and it will have positive j over here and however if both of the if both of the currents are you know create uh, carrying some current what will happen is let's say you have layer one I mean, if you are making some uh, transformer so you have layer one layer two layer three okay positives and you have the other layers next to that one so between layer one and layer two the current will try to push if they are carrying current in the same direction they will try to push the current density across each other so the current density in the first coil will be like that but the second one you know will try to push a little bit onto the surface so that will actually try to push a little bit uh, forward along that way so you will have uh, because of that one the current density in the coil will not be homogeneous and it will increase your i square r losses okay and if if there are two conductors close to each other carrying current in the opposite directions then the current density will concentrate at the you know at the surfaces facing to each other so you will have between layer three of like positive or negative current direction then you will have more current density on the points that are close to each other so it will 
you know once you plow that one so you can see it is like a heel shape okay and there's also the leakage flux okay so for uh, leakage flux so of course you can have some primary windings here secondary windings over here so the flux like instead of linking all traveling from the core there will be some points uh, not flowing through the uh, core but flowing through the air right so mmf distribution of that windings again you know this is uh, important once you decide to manufacture your own core you know i wish you had a chance to uh, build your uh, transformers but it will be mostly designed this semester but i still uh, would like to see uh, your uh, design steps in detail anyway so if you have that kind of like if you have like two layers and if you just put the like primary layers first and the secondary layers after that like you have the core and then you put like 100 turns for the primary winding then it is finished then you put another 100 winding for the secondary let's say it's a one-to-one -one transformer and because of that phenomenon okay so you can write a hdl equation and you can find of hdl is equal ni and you will find some non-zero h over here and then you can calculate it over here over here and actually if you do that you will find that kind of mmf distribution at first it will go up like climbing a hill then it will go down and all that mmf will create some uh, again losses in your uh, coppers and leakage flux you know once you have the leakage flux and then you have the uh, current carrying uh, conductors then you will have some losses so a better option and you will see it quite uh, commonly in power electronics uh, transformers or uh, that kind of applications is the interleaving windings right so instead of putting 100 windings from the primary first then the 100 windings from the secondary on top of the primary windings you can divide those things you can put 10 windings of the primary then 10 windings of the secondary then 10 windings of the another primary and so on so because of that one so once you make an hdl calculations hdl hdl so actually you have the primary going in one direction and secondary in the other direction so they cancel each other at some part then you start again so instead of having all that kind of hill so you have small maximums and minimums right so worst case in a core is like as i said you can have the primary and the secondary windings totally separate and the better case is again it may not be practical to like wind 10 coils and 10 coils from the other one like if you can make it like 10 times yes it will be better but it not it may not be like really practical so what you can do is maybe you can wind half of the primary windings then the secondary windings then the other half of the primary windings so you can have yes it goes to some uh, half of that number of turns times current uh, value then you have the half of the secondary then it cancels it out then you have the other half it goes to negative then you have the other one so that one is again a better uh, winding arrangement than this one or a better you know best case is maybe you can uh, divide it to even more regions right so the rest of the uh, slides are about how to use an rlc meter again in the labs to measure your uh, transformers i will i will skip that section okay uh, probably you know before uh, making any numeric calculations again it may, it may not be the uh, most optimum value i would like to solve a, a numerical example in the class so i strongly advise you to have a look at uh, those application notes then we will uh, discuss uh, that design and we will make an example okay